Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today is my 25th birthday. <laughs> I have seen a few of my friends do this video and I thought it was the perfect idea. I'm going to be talking about 25 books for my 25th birthday. I am no longer in my early 20s and that is scary, <laughs> okay? Very scary. Um, I still feel like I'm 18 at times, so we're not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna talk about it. But in all seriousness, thank y'all for being such wonderful viewers since I was 18. I've been doing this since I was 18. Anyways, I'm gonna talk about 25 books that I love and adore that I just want to gush about. This is an excuse to gush about 25 of my favorite books. So let's get started. There's not a particular order. I've kind of grouped them by genre like a little bit. So like for example, the first two that I'm gonna talk about are no, one of them's YA. They're by the same author. Let's just say that. First, I have to briefly mention the, the book that started it all for many others besides myself, and that is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. This book made me love romance. It is chaotic. It is <laughs> ridiculous, but you know what? This series has my heart. Um, it started it all for me. It's the thing that I grew up, I think I I think I first read this book in the fifth grade and um, was hooked, obsessed with it. This is the 10th anniversary special edition where if you flip it over, it's uh, life and death. Um, so flipped over, the pages are this way about life and death, but when then when you get this way, it's backwards because it's twilight. Um, I vividly remember getting this book when I was in high school, just walking into Barnes and Noble with a friend one day and that the, the just happened to be the day that this like surprise released so <laughs> oh a lot to my romance journey to this book specifically and edward and and bella speaking of stephanie meyer um the host i think this book is so underrated and i don't know why more people have not read it especially my sci-fi romance girlies my dystopian girlies this book is it. It is definitely for the older age range. It's not a YA book. So don't go in here thinking it's a YA book. It deals with very serious things and a few explicit things. And um, I'm obsessed with this. This and a few TV shows that I grew up watching are the reason why I love alien romance books so much. This book is about Wanderer who is an alien and in this universe of our world, aliens are like this big and the only way they can live is by being put inside of a host's body. So they have inhabited Earth and a wanderer gets put inside of Melanie's body, a human woman. With being put inside Melanie, she ends up getting all of her memories and her feelings and her love towards certain people. And that definitely causes a little bit of chaos. I adore this book. I reread it like every single year. This is probably the book besides Twilight that I've reread the most in my entire life. I started reading this in middle school. <laughs> I probably should not have been reading this in middle school, um, but I, I love it. I love it so much. I talk about this book a lot, but my favorite book of the year is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. And this book means so much to me. So thank you so much, Hannah, for writing the like most perfect book to me. I felt like this book was written for me. I've told her this many times. <laughs> I like, I feel like this book was written specifically for me and my taste and what I love in books. And so if you have similar reading tastes to me, this book will hit the spot. This is about Bo and Wynn who have a one night stand on Halloween and uh, that just so happens to leave Wynn pregnant and thus starts their forced proximity relationship. Bo invites Wynn to come live with him so that he can be more involved in her life and the baby's life that they're going to have together. Um, and nothing really happens physically between the two of them since that Halloween night because they don't want to ruin their relationship for this baby. Like they both want to be in this baby's lives. The disability rep in here is absolutely beautiful. This book is definitely an ode to those who have disabilities. That's why it strikes a special place in my heart. So when in here was born with a limb difference, its own voices, Hannah Bottom Young has the same limb difference where um, your hand is less developed. And then Bo had cancer and he now has an amputated leg from it. And the way that Hannah talks about disabilities in here and love, like I could cry just thinking about it. I have cried reading this book. I love this book so much. If you have not read this yet, get on with it now, please. <laughs> this would not be a favorite video without Radiance by Grace Draven. Like, who do you think I am? Hi, if you don't know me, if you're new to this channel, 
This book is everything to me. This is a fantasy romance book between Ildico and Brishin. They are from differing fantasy creatures, essentially. Ildico comes from a race of humans on this fantasy world, um, and she is the niece to that king of that people. And Brishin is a Kai, which is a fantasy creature who has gray skin, yellow eyes. You can kind of see it on the cover. Um, he's stunning. He's got claws. He's got sharp teeth. Anyway, he is the spare heir to his Kai kingdom. He's like fully expecting never to be king ever. These two people want to form an alliance. So they make basically the spares marry each other. When they first meet, they honestly think the other person is not very attractive, like a little bit scary looking, okay? Um, but they get married anyway, and they become like the bestest friends. They can't imagine like their life without the other person. And through them getting to know the other person's soul, they then find their outer beauty beautiful. And they fall in love, obviously. <laughs> I love this book so much. And I know that this book is definitely written for character driven readers. So just be aware of that. But book two is definitely more plot driven if you want to read a more plot driven story. The first two books in the series follow Brish and Ildico. So I just, I, I love them. I love them so much. They're like my babies. Royally Matched by Emma Chase is my next one. This is a royalty romance. I adore royalty romances. And I feel like this is the book the book series that started that love for me. This is actually book two in a series. You do need to read book one. Like please read book one because what happens at the end of book one leads to what happens to Henry in this book. Henry in here is the Prince of Wesco. It's basically like Genovia. It's a made up country, okay? Um, but we're gonna pretend that it's real. <laughs> and um, he hasn't really been in the best light with the media recently. And then he gets this offer to do basically bachelor royal edition to try and find his future princess and he agrees he's like let's just let's have some fun i'm not actually gonna find a wife out of this it's gonna be fine though i'm gonna have some fun there he ends up meeting sarah who is not a contestant on the show she's actually a contestant's sister who just came along as her companion like behind the scenes when henry and sarah meet like sparks definitely fly between the two i really relate to sarah like sarah is me as a person like i feel like i'm a chase wrote me in a book and it's Sarah here. <laughs> I love seeing Henry just become this ultimate puddle for this woman. Like she helps him see who he actually truly is. I adore it. I'm gonna say that about all these books, but like I love this book so sneaking much and I need more people to read it. And also if you don't like reality TV show stuff, I don't like reality TV show books. I don't. I love watching reality TV shows. Don't get me wrong, like competition reality shows. I, I love that. I eat that up. But in book form, it can get a little icky or like cringy to me. But this book like does it in a way that I adore it. I adore it. It's like the exception. Next, I have a duet. Okay. And I owe this favorite to Brie from In Love and Words. <laughs> I probably owe a lot of these books to Brie. Um, it's fine. I love you, Brie, so much. There's a reason why I love her. Um, <laughs> And um, I owe this duet specifically, my love for it to Brie because she got me hooked on it. And that is the Full Tilt duet by Emma Scott. I know I'm cheating and talking about two books, but it's fine because you know do, you don't get the HEA. You don't get the HEA if you just read this book. You got to read book two to get the happily ever after. All In is book two in this duet. I'm going to put this aside because I'm not going to talk about it, but you do need to read this one after you read this one do it if you haven't read these yet. Full tilt. <laughs> this is the romance between Casey and Jonah. Coming from somebody who does not like rock star romances, I love, I adore this book. Casey is a rock star. She is in a all woman like rock band, but she is basically in the weeds, like deep down under. She is not doing well. She's basically an alcoholic and she is, she's having a horrible time right now. She's not having the best time. She's realizing that this band is not the healthiest thing for her, but she doesn't know how to get out of this situation. Enter Jonah, who just so happens to be her limo driver, her band's limo driver for the night at one of these shows that they're performing at. And after the performance, while they're in the green room, Casey basically gets shwasted and her bodyguard ends up putting her in the backseat of the limo and telling Jonah, take her to where we're staying, please. Like, she is not okay. You need to go take her home. So he does just that. But when he gets to where she's supposed to be, the house is locked, no one's home. Like he doesn't want to leave this passed out girl on the porch and no one will answer the phone. Like no one is going to come bring her inside. So he's like, oh, okay, I'm going to have to bring her home with me. So he ends up bringing her home. And when she wakes up, she is mortified. And thus starts their very, sorry for the dogs. <laughs> and thus starts their very sweet 
and slow relationship that is absolutely epic. Then just this duet in general is epic. Emma Scott is, is epic. Okay. I don't really think I have a lot to say about this book, <laughs> but if you have not read this one yet, what are you doing with your life? This is A Court of Mist and Fury by Miss Sarah J. Mass, the second book in the Akatar trilogy. And I can't really talk about this at all, but this book definitely holds a very special place in my heart. This book actually formed a lot of my friendships that I have today, specifically this book. <laughs> is, this book is a huge contributor to some of the friendships that I have. Literally when I was in high school, when this book came out, I was reading this like for the fifth time backstage in a high school theater performance I was a part of. And she just walked by and that's how we started talking because she loves this book too. And we were just chatting like this book has contributed to many of my friendships and many like connections between people. And I cannot thank Sarah J Mass enough for that. And just this book is epic in general to me. This whole series is, I love it so much. I can't wait for the new book by Sarah to come out next year. Like I am chomping at the bit for it. The Silent Waters by Brittany Cherry is my next book. Oh my gosh, I love this one so stinking much. This is about Maggie and Brooks and their romance is one of the most epic romances I've ever read about in my life. Growing up when Maggie was a kid, she, when she met Brooks, he's her stepbrother's best friend. When she met him, she immediately was like, you're gonna be my future husband, like we're gonna get married. And he's like, ew, gross, no, cooties, like no, I'm not marrying you. <laughs> but she ends up like planning a wedding anyway in the middle of the woods and expecting to have him show up there for their wedding. This is when they're kids, by the way. But while she's in the woods, she ends up witnessing something very traumatic and she runs home and has not spoken since. This book takes place in time jumps, um, like when they were kids, um, I think when they're like teenagers and then when they are in their 20s and how their romance has progressed, progressed <laughs> throughout the years. They're more so friends at the beginning and then it shifts into lovers and it's absolutely beautiful. I love both of these characters and what both of them go through and just their romance is, again, epic. Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Oh my word, I love me some Chloe Brown. If you wanna read about a prickly, like grumpy heroine with a sunshiny hero, like, look no further than Chloe and Red. Chloe in here is our main heroine. She has a chronic illness called fibromyalgia, which is kind of like a sister condition somewhat to what I have. So I really related to her at a lot of points in this book. Um, that's why I have a lot of tabs <laughs> in here. Um, but she ends up getting kind of like this near death experience at the beginning of the book. She almost gets hit by a car and like her life flashes before her eyes and she's realized she's done like nothing with her life. She still lives at home and doesn't really do anything. And she feels like her chronic illness has definitely gotten in the way of that. And so she really wants to branch out more. She makes a get a life list, things she wants to check off, essentially like a bucket list to help her live a, a funner life essentially. So her first step is moving out of her parents' house. And she does that in the building that Red lives in. Um, they do not get up on the right foot. They banter, they bicker a lot. He's kind of like the superintendent of the building. Um, and they don't really care for each other. But then he kind of gets roped into helping Chloe complete her bucket list. It's super fun. Um, but yeah, one of the reasons why I love this book so much is because the discussion of chronic illness is in here and being a partner to someone who is chronically ill and just the way that Talia was able to relate to other people and how I was able to relate to Chloe, I feel like is like a work of art, like Talia Hibbert is a work of art. This is the first book I think I read that had like absolutely stunning, beautiful, fantastic chronic illness representation and it left me like breathless. I do have to mention, uh, I think you pronounce it Lisa, Lisa, Chloe Lisa books. Um, these are two of them. I love all of them, but I'm just gonna highlight these two. These two are definitely my favorite in the series. So Always Only You is about Frankie and Ren Bergman. And oh my gosh, Ren Bergman uh, is like the ultimate, ultimate man. Like mm, if I could just like take him out of this book and clone him, like I would be so rich. Okay, I'd be so rich. Everyone wants a Ren Bergman. He is like the perfect man, okay. Anyway, this is Grumpy Sunshine where the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine. He is a hockey player and she is the social media manager of sorts for the hockey team. Frankie is also autistic and has rheumatoid arthritis, another book with fantastic chronic illness representation. Ren in here has always been crushing hardcore on Frankie, but he knows that she's not ready for relationship. She's never insinuated that she is. Um, but then towards the beginning of the book, Frankie's home ends up getting broken into and she doesn't really have anywhere to stay. Um, while her locks and windows and doors are being fixed. So Ren offers 
the spare bedroom in his home and thus starts like a forced proximity situation that kind of like reveals them to figure out their feelings and reveal their feelings to each other. Like it's so good. This book is like perfect. This book is perfection. Another perfect book for me is Everything For You, which is book number five in the series. This one, I love it with my whole heart and chest. Like I feel like the books that have chronic illness representation in this series are like the ones that I like feel the closest to, if that makes sense. Like my heartstrings are pulled the most because I relate to it a lot. This is the romance between Gavin and Oliver. They are teammates on a soccer team. Um, Gavin is the team captain and his body is basically rebelling against him because he's been playing this sport for so long. He's dealing with a lot of chronic pain. And Oliver, he's very jealous of Oliver because he's this new, young guy, fresh, and um, he's jealous of him. He's like, I wish my body would work that way again, but it's not. Um, this is their grumpy sunshine romance that I absolutely like adore. I freaking adore it so much. I read Heartless this year and it did not disappoint <laughs> at all. Um, I completely understand why this is some people's like favorite book of all time. This is the romance between Cade and Willa. Cade is in need of a nanny for his, I think, six-year-old son. Enter Willa, who is his brother's fiance's best friend. Um, you get to read about them in book one, but Willa in here is not your typical, what you would assume to be your typical nanny. Um, their meet cute moment is absolutely iconic to me. They actually meet before she has her interview with him. So when they meet for the first time in a coffee shop at the beginning of this book, they don't know who the other person is and that they're about to go have an interview with them. You know what I mean? Anyway, she ends up like dropping her purse and things spill out of the purse and she may or may not drop a pair of unmentionables on the floor and um, he tries to give them back to her and she says, uh, why don't you keep them, finders keepers, and walks out the door. And he thought she was so attractive, like has not stopped thinking about her, but then she shows up for the nanny interview and he's like, this is not, this is not going to be good because I cannot be attracted to my son's nanny. Like what? I love nanny romances so much and this book is like the cream of the crop when it comes to any romances so I just had to mention it. Broken Whispers by Neva Altaj was one of my favorite books of last year. I feel like probably one of my favorite mafia romance books ever like I don't know. This is another book though with uh, disability representation. If you can't tell, I have a type. <laughs> this is the romance between Mikhail and Bianca. They are a part of differing, because they're not rivals. They're a part of different mafia families. Mikhail is a part of the Russian mafia and um, Bianca is the daughter to the head of, I believe the Italian mafia. And they get in a marriage of like a marriage alliance situation to align their families. Mikhail in here is a single father and he has actually been kind of like longing after Bianca for quite a long time. She is a dancer. She recently retired due to an injury, um, but he's watched so many of her performances and thinks she is absolutely stunning. And so he is actually very excited about this wedding and his possible future life with Bianca. Bianca, on the other hand, is a little bit worried and scared. Um, she's experienced quite a few injuries recently and uh, one that left her with her vocal cords being damaged so she's not able to speak. So this book is about the two of them trying to figure out their marriage, their relationship, and also this mafia world. I do have to mention three classics because I, I honestly think that these three books are romances. Like I think I categorize them in my head. Oh, I'm going to drop them. I categorize them in my head as romance books and you're not going to fight me on it. You're not going to fight me on it. First is obviously Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This book is like, I feel like the staple, the staple book in the romance genre. I feel like so many books that we have nowadays in romance would not exist if this book was not published. It is absolutely stunning. The romance between Elizabeth and Darcy is top tier. Absolutely top tier. The top tier couple like ever. I am also a sucker for Jane Eyre. I know some people absolutely hate this book. I do not care. <laughs> I don't care. Okay, this book got me into my love of classics. I love Jane and Rochester and their very angsty, angsty relationship. It's age gap. It's forbidden. There's a lot going on in here. It's even like a nanny romance. So um, can, again, can you tell that I have a type? <laughs> I feel like in these classic books, I love them so much because they have something that contemporary or like books 
published today don't really have, which is that very deep sense of longing. Like <laughs> that's what I feel like is these classics that I adore is this sense of longing that spans the whole entire book that just leaves your heart aching. And that's oh, what I felt in this one, I did. And I also felt it in um, Little Women. Little Women in here, one of the best books ever published, I feel like. Um, this book, like, I consider it to be romance. It's it's a romance. Okay, it's a romance. Don't fight me. Don't fight me. Don't fight me. <laughs> Don't ruin my mood. <laughs> it's my birthday. <laughs> okay, um, so this one is about the March sisters. This book is about four sisters and them figuring out who they are as people and also their love lives, obviously. This book, again, the longing that takes part in here, and it's even better because there's four sisters in here than just having like one heroine that you read about. There's four. And I loved every single sister in here, every single story and what they go through is tragic, but also like beautiful. A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher is a fantasy romance book that I will never stop thinking about this whole like series, but specifically book one is the best out of the three. I just think it's absolutely iconic. This is about Kat and Griffin. Kat is a magical being in this fantasy realm called a Kingmaker. She has magical powers that is only put into somebody once every 200 years. And these powers have the power to put kings on thrones, essentially. She has the power to, I think, tell when someone is lying and then also turn invisible, I think. There's like a few powers that she has. Um, and she has basically been on the run, been hiding in secret in this traveling circus because she ran away from home she was not happy there. Griffin just happens to be traveling by the circus and ends up seeing Kat and realizing who and what she is and he is determined to kidnap her and take her back to his realm. If you have not read this book yet and you are a fantasy romance lover, you are missing out. Like you are missing out. The banter between these two, this is like hate to love to the max. He literally chains her to him so she can't leave him. <laughs> I love this series as a whole, but this one is definitely my favorite out of the bunch. Okay, I talk about Ruby Dixon a lot. I literally have like two shelves full of her books. Um, so I'm gonna limit myself to three. I limited myself to three, okay? Um, first off is The King's Spinster Bride. This is the um, special edition that I got at Book Bonanza. And I absolutely love this. This is a novella that takes place in a fantasy realm. So this is a fantasy book. Also, if you wanna know what the couple looks like, this book has a step back. They're stunning. This is Hala and Mathior. So when Hala was 16, her dad, who is the king of this uh, certain country in this fantasy world, um, he decided to kidnap a rivaling kingdom's son, like young son. If Hala wasn't there to protect the boy, he would have died. Um, the kingdom ends up getting taken over by that little boy's dad and he pardons Hala, basically says, you can go live in this convent for the rest of your life. I don't want to see you ever again, but you can live because you saved my son. It is years later, Mathior has now taken the throne and he needs a wife. And for years, all he's been able to think about is the young woman who kept him safe all those years ago. So he's out to go get Hala and make her his queen. So this is an age gap where the heroine is older in here. There are so many beautiful, hot marriage customs that I was absolutely obsessed with. Absolutely obsessed with. Left me blushing, like giggling, kicking my feet. I loved, I loved this novella so much. Then my favorite book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series is Barbarian's Redemption. This is the romance between Beck and Ellie. I can't really talk about this all that much because it would kind of spoil the series. I, I'm someone who thinks that you should read the books in order, but I'm not the reading police. You do you. Again, this is about Beck and Ellie. Beck has not been the greatest dude in the previous books in the series. And this is his romance with a very shy, scared, timid woman who does not want a mate at all. And Beck is absolutely heartbroken, but Ellie has experienced quite a lot of trauma in her life. She was taken when she was a little girl and abused in alien slavery for years. And Beck doesn't really understand the concept of slavery at all because of where he comes from. Like that doesn't exist on his planet. So the two of them are having to deal with the fact that they're resonant mates. Like they're singing for one another. Their resonant bond is singing, but um, Ellie needs to be more comfortable with who she is and Beck in general before we get there. Probably my favorite Ruby Dixon book is When She Belongs. This is a Grumpy Sunshine romance that is Perfect, absolutely perfect. This is about Sophie and Jurok 
And um, this is like book four, I think, in the Aristiverse series. Um, again, I like reading them in order. You don't have to. But basically in the previous books in the series, Sophie was rescued from slavery by these like four, no, three alien brother space pirates. And uh, they want to go treasure hunting, but they don't want Sophie to be in danger. So they drop her off at their friend's abandoned asteroid. <laughs> and um, they're like, this is Jirok's asteroid. No one else lives on here besides, lives on it besides him. So you'll be safe. Okay, so they end up dropping her off with her like alien, giant alien pet and um, having to stay on this asteroid with like Jirok the jerk. He is grumpy and gruff and wants nothing to do with Sophie. He just wants to tinker with his toys, like make things, invent things for the rest of his life. Like he does not want this woman to be bugging him. But she's a chatterbox of a woman. Okay, and she's not gonna be, she's not gonna deal with his grumpy attitude. No, no, no. <laughs> she definitely gets under his skin. Okay. And I love it. I love just seeing a man melt for a woman. Like I, I, I adore it. Another alien romance is broken by the Horde King. I don't have a physical copy. Um, these last couple books, some of them I don't have physical copies of. So um, like, that's what I want to do for my birthday is get these ones. Anyway. Um, so broken by the Horde King. I read this one, I believe, I believe this year, this year um, with Victoria over at Victoria's Romance Reads. And uh, we buddy read this series and it was absolutely iconic. This series is absolutely iconic. If you love alien romance books, you have to read this series. Like you are missing out. This is book four. I think you can read it as a standalone, honestly. Um, but basically our heroine in here lives on this planet that is filled with aliens who are like the natives to the planet. They're called the Dakar, Dr Dakar and, um, or Dracar. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Sorry. <laughs> um, but they basically remind me of the Dothraki people from Game of Thrones, except they have like gold skin and tails and like glowing eyes. And that's like the main difference. If you're not into like monstery creatures, like don't worry, like it doesn't really get monstery. This series reads like a fantasy book. So if you want to get into alien romances, I feel like this is a great like stepping point. Anyway, so Harriet in here, she's actually a human woman. And human refugees have come to this planet for quite a few years. So like, she's not the only human on the planet. However, one alien in general ends up finding um, her when she is like a baby in the middle of these woods and takes her back to their village and adopts her into their family. Um, so she is the only human in this alien village. She ends up befriending like the only guy, the only person in the village besides her family who like, isn't a bully towards her because she's the only human. His name is Kieran and he is basically set up to be the next ruler of the village, to be the next Horde King. She has had the biggest crush on him ever since they were kids. And when they're finally of age, there's like this ceremony that happens that when you want to show your interest to one of the rulers, you go, I think like put like a cup of wine in front of them at the table and they can like, accept you or refuse or refuse you. Um, but it happens in front of like everybody. And he publicly like, refuses her and her heart is broken. They haven't seen each other since, I think it's been like 10 years um, since he's been back to the village. And when he comes back, he is making the decision to finally make this woman his. Like, he's like, this is my woman. I am going to have her see that she's actually meant to be mine. And I was an idiot all those years ago. So a lot of groveling and a lot of angst. I love it. One of my favorite paranormal romance series is the Immortals After Dark series. This one is my favorite. I feel like this is Demon from the Dark. Oh, and I can't really talk about this book that much because a lot of the stuff that happens in this book is because of what happens in the books before it. <laughs> this is the romance between Malcolm and, um, how do you say her name? Caro? 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 She's a witch and he's like this demon vampire hybrid creature, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, um, Caro is being blackmailed to go to the realm that Malcolm is a part of and um, bring him to this certain facility. But while she's in this different realm she ends up falling for this giant of a man who like looks scary on the outside but is absolutely gobsmack smitten for her and she's never really had someone like that in her life and she's devastated when she's like gonna have to betray him because uh she's being blackmailed to save like a kid's life this whole series is amazing but like this one specifically top notch i also love the black tiger brotherhood series and my favorite one in that one is lover mine this is john matthew and zex's story they're my favorite couple i love them so much john matthew in here oh my gosh you have to read this series from the beginning do not read this book by itself it's book number eight you gotta you gotta go read it book number uh 
one, like all the way from number one, because I think we get introduced to John Matthew when he's not even a vampire yet in book number two. And just seeing his whole journey and seeing all the flashbacks and things that go on in here, like, oh my word. I was like shocked how much I love this book. Like, well, not really, because I love John Matthew, but <laughs> I love the dynamic between the two characters. Zex is a bad A warrior woman who is giant, has muscles, like has this crop haircut. Like she's an absolute bad A. Like she is, she should be feared. She should be feared. And this is her romance with like the sweetest, most caring man ever. And I love their dynamic and how hard they fall for each other. It's beautiful. I do have to sprinkle in two historical romances as my last two. So Devil in Spring by Lisa Kleypas is probably my favorite Lisa Kleypas book. This is book number three in the Ravenel series. This is about uh, Gabriel and Pandora and <laughs> Pandora does not want to get married. She is a lady of the ton, but she's like, I don't want to get married. I don't want to deal with a husband. I just want to make board games for a living and like be an old spinster. Like that sounds amazing to me. And so she does not want to get married, but her twin sister does. And so she goes out to society and goes to balls to appease her sister and hopefully help her sister find a match. Um, but then uh, at the beginning of this book, when they're at a ball, she does some exploring, if you will, in some of the rooms on the estate that they, the ball is at. And um, she's exploring and she gets her like dress stuck in a settee in this room. Gabriel is a lord and he's just walking by and notices that this woman is like having some difficulty and is like gonna help her, but then he also gets stuck in the settee, his coat does, and um, they get compromised. People walk into the room and are like thinking they're doing some nefarious things together and they're essentially ruined after that. And Gabriel's like, oh man, dude, like I gotta marry you now. She's like, no, you don't. Dude, don't worry about me. Like I'll go live in the country all by myself with my board games. Like I don't need to marry you. Don't worry about me. And he's like, no, like I have to marry you. <laughs> like this is gonna happen. I do not want to ruin your life. So he <laughs> tells her like, how about you and your family come stay with me and my family at our property. And I can, I think in like a certain number of days, like I'm going to try to woo you to be my wife. Gabriel didn't even really want to get married in the first place, but when he meets Pandora, like, he's absolutely smitten with her. And it's like, she's actually gonna be like the perfect wife for me. I just have to prove that to her. This one is so sweet and beautiful. Like if you haven't read the Ravenel series, like you have to, especially for that book specifically. And the last book that I have to mention for this video, my 25th book that I have to mention is one of my favorites of the year. This is Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. Scarlett Scott is quickly becoming one of my favorite historical romance authors. I adore her book so much. This one is about Calliope and Lord Sin. This book, starts out with uh, Lord Sin kidnapping Lady Calliope, okay? She did not do the, the greatest things to him, so he kidnaps her in retaliation. Um, she thinks that Lord Sin is responsible for her brother's death that happened a year, a few months ago, and she's been writing these pamphlets in the paper under his name, talking about the debauched, scandalous things that he's done, and it's basically ruined his reputation. No one wants to marry him, and he needs to find a wife to further on his line. And so he kidnaps her and it's basically like, you're gonna come stay with me in my estate. I'm literally gonna chain you up in my room until you agree to be my wife because uh, no one else will and you're responsible for what happened. <laughs> so like, this is gonna happen. So this is definitely an enemies to lovers. Like I hate you, like both of them hate each other romance. It's angsty and like full of passion. If you wanna read a book that is full of passion, look no further. Anyway, so you have it. Those are 25 romance books that I love for my 25th birthday. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any like birthday related emoji down below. Um, but thank y'all so much for making this birthday absolutely beautiful and fantastic. I love y'all so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye y'all.